how to get to your first 1,000 sales on your Etsy shop. From a guy that has 77,000 sales in just two years, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how that looks like. Hi guys, my name is Vlad. I'm the owner of Tag Pup. It is the number one pet product store on Etsy in terms of volume and sales. Now, when you check with E-Rank, you'll see that I'm number two, but that's because the overall sale is what they matter most. But I think that's a bunch of baloney. Go check the daily sales. I'm outranking the top competitor. Now, the reason why I say that is so that you don't just click away and, you know, lose the opportunity to get this valuable information because I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to really increasing those sales, really starting to take your store to another level. So if you're interested in that, make sure to keep watching. Now, subscribe if you're if this kind of content interests you because I'm not the guy that's going to be telling you about passive income. There's nothing passive about working hard and you have to work hard in order to make some profit. Even if even though it might look like passive, you still really got to work really hard and i'm not going to be promising you that you are going to make a lot of money for your first two months in fact the first point on how you get to your first 1000 is you have to understand that it's not going to be very profitable sales for your first 1000 you just have to accept that a lot of people get really frustrated when they're saying where's all this money going i've already made a thousand sales and i still feel like i'm broke the reality is you are growing your business and the business is kind of like a baby it needs a lot of work and attention before you can expect anything from it so you have to make sure to you that you are willing to accept the fact that hey this is not going to make me that much money even my first 1000 sales and you have to expect accept that hey maybe sometimes i'm gonna have to provide some money to the business because it's something that needs to grow because if you want it to support you you have to support it so Really, really make sure that you accept this fact. And the second one, and this is part of the biggest reasons why you're not going to be as profitable, is you have to be willing to run some advertisement, spend some money on advertisement. Why is it that you spend money on sewing machines and, and, and any kind of machines or inventory and uh, ph photography and all these other things to make the product or, or, or make the product look good, but when it comes to actually selling it, we all of a sudden become penny pinchers on advertisement. So if you spend, say, $2,000 on your camera, why not allocate $2,000 for advertisement? That's going to take your store to a whole other level if you are willing to think in that terms. Um, so, so make sure that you be willing to spend money on advertising. Now, when you are running ads on Etsy, here's a little quick little tidbit on how to really pay attention to whether that advertisement works or not. You scroll, you go into statistics, you scroll down, and you look at this pie chart. And this pie chart is very important. It shows you where your traffic is coming from in terms of percentage to this listing. Now, the biggest section will be coming from your store because, you know, when you're just starting, if you have, say, three people come into your store and two of them check out this listing, yes, yeah, most of your people went to this listing or, or two people that did come to this listing came from your store and, like, the one person that came from elsewhere came from either paid ads or organically. So, so it'll be the largest section of the pie. So, so don't pay attention to that for now. Pay attention to the paid versus non-paid traffic, the organic versus the advertisement. And that's the two section that you see there. When you uh, run ads, the, or, the paid advertisement is going to be the larger of the two. But as you are selling it, as it's, it's you know, testing it on the algorithm, you will start to see that the organic section of the pie chart will start to grow. That's because it's starting to get traction on its organic listing. Now, the way advertisement works is it splits your listing into two duplicates. One of them will be the advertised listing. The other one will be your organic listing. Now, the goal is to get your organic listings to, to rank higher than your advertisement right? Because if people see your organic one first, that means they're more likely to click on something that's not going to cost you any money, but then, you know, then clicking on your paid that will cost you money. Now, in the beginning, your organic one will be ahead. And sometimes, even right now, on very high-selling products, I still have my organic one on top and my, uh, sorry, my paid advertisement on top and my organic on the bottom. And that's fine with me because sometimes they'll, they'll, they might skim through the first the advertisement and then recognize the second one so i'm okay having both of my listings be um on every single keyword so over time the way you can check it is you go and you filter say 
let's say you run the advertisement for 30 minutes, or sorry, for 30 days, <laughs> and you take the first seven days, filter the first seven days of that period, and you, see, you look at the pie chart, you can screenshot it, and then you filter out this last seven days of that 30-day period and look and screenshot it again and see if the organic section has grown. If it has, then it's showing you some movement on the organic listing. And that's a good thing. You want to pay attention to that. You want to run advertisement even more confidently if you see that growing, despite the fact that your profitability might not be as good. So that's really important that you pay attention to that. Now, number three, don't buy too much inventory of one type of product. Have a diversity of products. And what I mean by that, don't just have, well, I have this kind of t-shirt and this kind of t-shirt. No, have a hoodie, have a hat, have a pair of socks, right? Have different variety of products. Don't just invest so much money or time or, or may making or sewing one type of product. Make sure that you invest into the inventory of a variety of product, especially when you're just starting because you want to test out the market. Now, big disclaimer, the results might not be the same as it was for me or anybody else. The biggest thing that you can do to, to get as close to the results that I've been having is to do your research on your keywords, to do the research whether that product is going to sell, is in demand and searched in, 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 commonly or, or, or in, is, is a high traffic keyword, has high tra traffic keywords, right? It's really important that you do your research. If you haven't, make sure to check out my video on the keyword research as well. Uh, it's very important in, in, for you to really have a good foundation for a good, healthy beginning because all of this will have to be built on top of that. So, but when you are selling, sometimes your research is not always 100% accurate. Sometimes you'll sell things that you didn't even think that would sell, or you would start to discover keywords while selling certain products. And then when you'd look at your analytics, which I will be put, putting a video on how to analyze your uh, analytics on your Etsy platform or dashboard. So make sure to uh, subscribe for that or hit the bell notification if that interests you. But sometimes you need to pay attention to what your store is doing with the new products that you're introducing apart from doing the research. So really putting out new products um, will allow you to have a real time data from your own store. So have a variety of products. Don't just focus on one or two products and that's it. Um, have a variety of product. And so don't, don't invest too much time, money or resources to one type of product. Okay, so have a variety. All right, the next one is be open-minded on what you should sell. A lot of people out there that I've met, they have this great idea. They're like, oh, this is gonna be good. Everybody would want this. And they're so excited about this one product that they're not open-minded to saying like, hey, what about if you sell this instead? Like, what are you talking about? Some of the folks that I know that sell really well, they started selling wedding hangers, personalized wedding hangers. These dudes, you would think like, well, if you're a dude, don't you want to sell something like, oh, that you can be proud of? Like, yeah, I sell, you know, this, you know, leather wallets, man. I, you know, something manly, but they sell wedding hangers. And when I said, told people I sew dog collars, they were like, what? That doesn't, you know, it's not something you can, or I started off selling uh, embroidered dog bandanas. That's what it was. And it was not the most glamorous thing to say what you do for work. <laughs> you're like, oh, I sell dog bandanas on Etsy, like, right? So be open-minded on what you're going to sell because that's going to give you the ability to mold and, and, and be adaptable to the market that will give you the best shot that you possibly can for the first 1,000, okay? Now, as you're starting to grow your store and it's becoming uh, this behemoth, hopefully, uh, then you can start introducing very unique products that are nowhere to be found on Etsy because now you have so much traffic coming from other listings that they're starting to discover these really new products or these really cool ideas that you have. I would recommend is find the products that are selling that people do know that they're searching because the search engine is the window, you know, to, to, to products that they know of. And if you start selling the products that they know of, then you can introduce the products that they don't know about. Because if they don't know about a certain kind of idea or product, then they're not going to search something they do not know into the search engine. So that's really important to keep in mind. So the next thing is you want to think about scalability. This is a very important. Now, when you're just starting, you don't care about scalability. That's fine. But as you're going to start making some sales, you want to think about scalability. Now, the reason why that's something you need to think about in this stage is because if you think about scale, you reduce price. You reduce price for your product. Now, when you reduce your price, 
you will get more sales. Now, there's a lot of people say, well, with handmade, you know, people actually might buy less because if it's something cheap, then they don't trust that it's handmade. That's a bunch of baloney. Now, there is a small amount of people that, yeah, they do think that way. Like, hey, if it's cheaper, then it's probably not as good quality. I've literally yesterday uh, realized that my sale ran out. But the way I realized that is because I had a plummet in how many sales I was getting. Right, the price was at, at a at a higher end than my competitors, so the sale went tanked. So I had to, you know, come up with another price um, pricing for my products in order to get back to my daily sales that I'm used to. So it does impact how much you're selling. So really think about scalability because that will give you the ability to reduce your price. And that's something that you want to do. Now, also, when you reduce your price, you don't want to reduce your price to where you're suffering. You want to make sure you reduce your price based on the improved processing because it is actually easier for you. It is actually cheaper for you to make this product and you are rewarding your customers with a better price. So think about scalability during this period. Now, you don't have to think about it off the bat in the beginning, but you do want to have it in the back of your mind so that you're trying to improve your process. If you can have a good process in the very beginning, well, you can reduce that price and out, you know, outprice your competitors you know, fairly quickly, and then that will give you the upper hand over your competitors off the get-go. Also, reviews are critical. Reviews are really critical during this time because you don't have that much review. So one out of 10 reviews is 10%. So, so what that means that you, every review does matter. So if a customer is complaining or if a customer doesn't like something, take your time to really answer that. Now, when you have, you know, 30 reviews a day, 40 reviews a day. It doesn't matter, right? If somebody complains, you're like, well, it's, you know, they'll be overwhelmed with how many reviews I'm going to get. They're not even going to show up on my <laughs> reviews or that, you know, so you should take care of all your customers. But I'm just saying is that when you have less sales, bad reviews are a lot bigger deal. Now, the next one is when you are selling your product, add a special touch to it, a, th a handwritten thank you letter saying, thank you so much for supporting my store. That adds a little bit of person to person interaction and they love that. That does improve the better chances of getting a good product. And if it's not a good product there, they'll think twice about leaving a bad review. They'll, they'll contact you first and say, Hey, cause you know, you've already been on a, got out of good terms with them. So they're like, Hey, I, you know, I really love the product, but it was too small. Hey, instead of going on reviews, this was the horrible thing. Cause, cause now they have, they kind of know you a little bit. And so adding a personal touch does help you with a better chance of getting a better review. Or even, um, when you, when you're sending out and send a little extra, right? If you have extra fabric, sew a little something for them and give them a thank you. This is a really important time for your store. So you want to make sure it says it says you know it's like a seed has all the, the most important elements when it's small and then when it grows it's not that each part of the tree is less valuable but it has less amount of that important elements right you could cut off a branch it could survive but if you chop a seed in half you're not gonna you know it's a, a bigger deal so you want to make sure that you have some kind of personal element when you are starting to send out your product now as you get bigger my personal opinion is actually reduce the amount of packaging cost because that and, and, and let that rep be represented in the price of your product. Customers would rather pay less than have an, a pencil in their order that they didn't want, that they technically paid extra because the packaging is, you know, cost you money. And the second to last is make sure that you get your orders done fast. Now, when you're just starting your store, you should, there shouldn't be a reason why you should be overdue on some of your orders. Make sure you do them fast because with fast orders, they, people are more happier. They give you better, better reviews uh, when you are fast in your processing. And, and, and you know, show that in your product. Hey, one day fulfillment. That gives you better conversion rate when people are clicking on your listing. And the last one, and this is very important. I kind of touched on it throughout the points that I was talking about is make sure that your price price is fair. When you're starting, you're very inefficient. It is, you're, you're very slow. It's taking you forever. You might work on one product for like two hours, but you sold it for three, $30 and your profit margin, say 50%. You've only made like $6 an hour. That's fine. When you're starting to grow your business, it's going to cost you financial, you know, it's going to, it's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you time, your effort. And that's, you know, just because it's costing you money, you're thinking, well, it shouldn't cost my effort. Yes, you should work, be willing to work for free. Um, I sometimes, like I said in my other videos, I sell products at a loss. So when I do the products, I manufacture the products and I pay for the work. So, but that's okay because like I said, it is a growing 
thing. It is a baby that needs to be taken care of before it can take care of you, right? All right, well, that's it. If I blessed you with this video, hey, bless me by leaving a like in the bottom. Comment on that on the bottom. What is your favorite technique? If you have reached a thousand sales, what is your favorite technique that you like to, uh, that, that helped you to push you to the to 1,000? If you liked any of these, or if you disagree with some of them, hey, Let's talk about it in the comment section. If you like this kind of content, I have more on my channel. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification because I said this before and I'm still working on it. Uh, I'm going to be opening up a new Etsy shop and I'm going to be documenting everything that I do and I'm going to take that store to its, you know, to its heights. So you guys get to be part of that journey. So make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified when that happens. I'll see you next time.